If that's a little too fast for you, let's take a closer look at Lou's playbook. Lou had many accomplishments. Lou entered Fordham University in 1937, where he would go on to receive his bachelor's degree in business administration. He played football and was regarded as one of the best centers of all time. As a formidable presence on the field, Lou was named Fordham's captain and leader, where he appropriately wore the number one. You had to be tenacious in those days. They had no face masks, as he told us several times. Just gritty, tough guys, like Big Lou seen here, having a little disagreement with another player as the referee steps in. I wish we saw these pictures on film day. Here we find Lou stalking a running back while playing in a snowstorm. Somehow Lou always seemed to make the headlines. Here he's having a little fun while preparing for the big Cotton Bowl game in Texas. Boy, I sure feel sorry for that Ram mascot. The build-up to the 1941 Cotton Bowl game was like that of a great heavyweight fight, matching two dominating captains. Texas A&M's All-American running back, Big John Kimbrough, and of course our own Big Lou. They're pictured here meeting before the big game. Here you can see Lou and the boys enjoying a New Year's Eve meal prior to the game. Coach would never let us get away with this before the Ansonia game. Lou with the medical staff getting that trick knee, as he always told us about, taken care of before the big game. Coach would never let us stay in the training room this long. Lou and the Fordham team receive a big welcome in Texas. Here they staged a mock stick up and as you can see, Lou was protecting his wallet. Lou attends a pre-game mass at Our Lady of Victory. Looks like Lou was more interested in the camera. Lou takes time to sign a few autographs for the ladies. The 1941 Cotton Bowl game was a sellout for this greatly anticipated battle. This is actual footage of the Cotton Bowl showing Lou playing defense in the dark uniforms, going head-to-head -head with the country's most devastating runner, John Kimbrough. Now we know these stories he told us at practice were true. Not that we dared to doubt him. In this picture, Lou is putting the stop on Kimbrough. Oh, 
Oh, Jesus. I just might let that guy get away from me. How are you hiding? That's what beat us. He was a sleeper. Sounds like Dolly could use another cup of coffee to get through the second half of this game film. We had guys open, but he didn't hit them. Lou and the team get a hero's welcome back in New York after the game. We never saw Coach at practice with those 10-gallon hats. drafted to play pro football for the Giants. Lou stayed in New York where he coached the East Meadow Jets to perennial football dominance. It was a turn of events that brought Lou to Derby. An interview in Shelton left him disappointed. A short time later, a small school district interviewed Lou for a teaching and coaching position. Derby Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Dorenzo, told Lou he couldn't afford the salary of some of the other districts, but he could have a coaching position. Lou's answer was, Do you play Shelton? Oh yes, coach, our biggest game of the year, our Thanksgiving Day rivalry. I'll take the job. Coach DiFlippo's days at Derby were legendary and memorable for an entire community. Sit back and enjoy some of these moments. You can probably hear the crowd to this day and the cheers from the sparrows. How many times have you heard this one? Quitters are a dime a dozen. Coach instilled a sense of pride in every one of his boys.
Coach not only demanded respect, he gave it back tenfold. always had a special relationship with the referees. He's being very polite calling him a meatball. Thank you, Lou and Dolly, for all the great memories.